Okay, to summarize, you know, what we uh, did with multi-sim, we took DC measurements, AC measurements, and then we made some calculations. The DC measurements we took were VB at 0.831 volts, VE at 0.2 volts, so those are at the base and the emitter, and if we subtract those two, that'll give us the potential difference between the base and emitter, which tells us what class of operation we were in. If it's between around 0.5 to 0.85 volts, you know, somewhere in the middle, then there's a good chance it's going to be class A operation. Okay, so we figured it was class A. We also took some AC measurements. We hooked up the generator, inserted an AC signal, and then we measured its input voltage at, test, at the input at this point, and we also measured the output over at the collector, and then we um, were able to calculate the voltage gain, the AC. And then with uh, multi-sim, we were actually able to use the watt meter to calculate the power. The power input, uh, which was 795 microwatts, the power output, which was 326 milliwatts. And remember, milliwatts is a thousand times greater in value than microwatts, three decimal points. Okay, so with those two measurements, we were able to calculate the power gain, which is output power divided by input power equaled 2,434 uh, as a power gain, which is quite a bit. And using um, our input and output currents that we you know, used earlier, we are able to calculate the transistor's beta, which was 127. Okay, now we're ready to use the real, uh, to actually take real measurements with the NIDA equipment and real test equipment. Okay, unfortunately, um, doing the real stuff has some disadvantages. Okay, we are able to measure VB, so we'll be able to make a, uh, the base DC voltage measurement, we'll be able to make the emitter voltage measurement, we'll be able to subtract, okay, so we'll be able to do this, we'll be able to figure out what class of operation this should be in, and then whenever we insert the AC signal, we'll be able to measure the AC input, We'll be able to measure the AC output, and then we'll be able to calculate the voltage gain by using the voltage measurements. However, uh, we don't have power, most electronics um, training facilities don't have watt meters. So we won't be able to calculate or measure the wattage input and the power out, therefore we cannot calculate the power gain. We can also not measure the currents of the base and the collector to calculate the, um, the beta of the transistor without desoldering parts. So really out of all the stuff we can do, we're limited. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements, but first thing we need to do is remove jewelry for safety. So I'm gonna take off my jewelry. I've already removed rings, necklaces, everything else. And now I need to turn on the DC power and the multimeter, I need to put it to measure volts DC because we're gonna be measuring the DC voltage. Measure the voltage at the base and the voltage at the emitter. So I'll put the black lead on test point one, which is a ground. And I'm gonna measure voltage of the base, which is right here, test point four. Test point four. And I measure 0.822. So, so I have 0.822 volts um, on the real circuit and on multi-sim we had 0.831 so they're very very close. Okay, the voltage on the emitter is a test point six. So VEE is a test point six which is right here so I'll make that measurement and we have 0.266 volts. On multi-sim we measured 0.2 volts so again they're very similar. Now if we subtract the two voltages we should get uh, somewhere between 0.5 and 0.8 volts, somewhere right in the middle of that, as close as possible, will tell us that it's class A operation. Uh, Multi-sum, it came up to 0.631 volts. Here, we need to make a calculation. Again, if you don't want to you do the calculations or the subtractions using the calculator, we could just take the probes and actually measure 
directly across the junction, the base emitter junction. So we could go from test point four with the red lead, since it's an MPN transistor, and the black lead would go to test point six, and that should be around the 0.556 that we calculated. So test point four is the red lead, test point six is the black lead, and we get 0.556 volts, which is what we calculated. So that would be an easier method if you don't want to um, do the uh, subtractions. And again, we think that this would be class A operation. Okay, now we're ready to start setting up for the AC measurements. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set our generator to the uh, same frequencies and the peak to peak that we had on multisim. Okay, the input will come from the function generator and that will be set up 4,000 hertz, 15 volts peak to peak. So we, we have the input coming from the generator right here and it goes into the input which is at test point two. So I'll take my oscilloscope, pick up the ground lead. Yeah, the oscilloscope ground leads always go to ground. And I will check test point two. And I will make any adjustments that I need to make on the function generator to get 15 volts peak to peak. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, we're on five volts per division, three squares, that's 15 volts peak to peak. Okay. Next, um, we want to look at our output, input and output voltages to the circuit. So the input is at test point three, so I'm gonna put channel one to test point three, and that'll be in the millivolts range. In fact, on um, multi-sim, we had 135 millivolts peak to peak. And on the output, I can use this lead as another ground. I'll put channel two. It output, according to the schematic, is test point eight. So I'll go up here and find test point eight, which is right here. And this would be the output. Okay, on channel one, which is on the top up here, I'll just move this just to make sure. Okay, that's the input. It's on channel one, which is test point three. <coughs> and we are set at 50 millivolts per division. So if we calculate the peak to peak, we have 50 millivolts per division, so it'll be 50, 100, and I'll move this to the middle so I get a more accurate reading. 110, 20, 30, 135 ish. So we have 135 millivolts peak to peak. And on channel 2, which is the output, it's down here. I need to move, I need to center it again to get the peak to peak voltage. Channel 2 is on 2 volts peak division, uh, 2 volts per division. So we have one, two, three point two four. So three point four times two is six point eight volts peak to peak. 